Excuse me. I'm from the testing lab. I'm here to test the mortar. Are you here to get the materials to take back to the laboratory per ASTM C 270 or are you here to evaluate the mortars per ASTM C 780? I'm here to test the mortar and make sure it meets the job specifications. Well, this job specification is under ASTM C270, so do me a favor, take these materials back to the laboratory, and I'll see you in 28 days. No, I'm here to test the mortar you're mixing to make sure it meets the strength requirements of the job. You can't take the mortar out of this mixer per ASTM C270. My boss told me to get mortar you're mixing, make cylinders, and bring them back to the lab to make sure it meets the job requirements. Well, it's obvious we got some real confusion here. Let's get back to the job trailer and let's make some phone calls. There's a lot of confusion over testing mortar in the field. There's a lot of confusion over the specifications, too. What's the difference between a specification and a test method? Specifications give you specific property requirements materials have to meet. Test methods explain how to run specific tests to measure those requirements. I think we should briefly take a look at the ASTM standards. ASTM C270, the standard specification for mortar for unit masonry, has two alternate specifications proportion and property. The proportion specification, Table 1, governs if neither is specified. Strength requirements are only in Table 2, the property specification. Table 2 requirements are for laboratory prepared mortars only. This is what you have to remember. Section 3.1 states that ASTM C270 is not a specification to determine mortar strengths through field testing. Test method 780 is the acceptable method for pre-construction and evaluation of mortars. And something else you really have to keep in mind, stronger mortars are not necessarily better. As a matter of fact, ACI 530 states that a good rule of thumb is to specify the weakest mortar that will perform adequately, not the strongest. ASTM C780 is the standard test method for pre-construction and construction evaluation of mortars for plain and reinforced unit masonry. That covers sampling and testing, consistency in board life, mortar aggregate ratio, air content, and compressive strength of mortar cubes and cylinders. That sounds great, Will, but I want to know if the mortar the mason is mixing is good. You can test a field mortar, Ray, but there are a lot of factors that affect the results. But how do I know if the materials the mason is using are the proper materials? ASTM will tell you what you need to know. ASTM C270 is a laboratory test method. So you need to run it in a lab like this one. You also need some very specific pieces of equipment. Two key pieces of equipment you will need are the mortar mixer and the flow table. ASTM C270 also gives specific requirements for the batching of the materials to prepare the mortar. The mortar is mixed to a consistency that will achieve a flow of 110% plus or minus 5%. That means the diameter is just over double its original molded size. Ray, it's a real catch-22. Testing laboratories are hired to test the field mortar to see if it meets C270. They may not know they're running the wrong test, or they may be running the test they were asked to perform, test the field mortar. But in either case, it's one of the biggest problems in our industry. Sometimes the easiest solution is to over-design the mortar so much that they pass the wrong test being run incorrectly. Do you mean that sometimes we over-design mortars just to pass incorrect field testing? Unfortunately, yes, but let's take a look at some of those field tests. Will, I'd like to show you why you can't test the mortar out of the field mixer and compare it to C270 results. This brick couplet we've set up on the table gives an excellent example. We mixed up a field mortar and laid up these brick, and you can see that the brick are already absorbing a lot of the moisture out of the mortar. This is making the mortar stiffer. It's also lowering the water cement ratio in the mortar, making it much stronger. I've got a C270 mortar I'd like you to give me. This is, as we saw earlier in the cement lab, mixed to a consistency of a C270 mortar. It's relatively stiff. It's a little too stiff 
to lay up brick. And as you can see, I can form a pat, and it has some workability, but not really good workability. I've also got a field mortar. If you could give me that, Will. This is more typical of the consistency of a field mortar. And you can see it's a lot softer, it's a lot more pliable, and it's got a lot more flow. This is more typical of the mortars that a mason would be using uh, in the field. Now this mortar will test a lot stronger than this mortar right now as they are in the pan. But I've got a third mortar. If you could hand me that one. This is a mortar that we prepared at the same time as these. We laid up some brick. We let them sit in the brick for a few minutes, about six or seven minutes. Let the brick absorb the water out. And you can see that this mortar is much stiffer than either of the other two mixes. And because it's stiffer, it has a lower water cement ratio, it's going to be much stronger than either one of these two mortars, stronger than the field mortar, stronger than the mortar made in the C270 lab. You said the aspect ratio was also important? That's a great question. Aspect ratio has a big part to do with compressive strength testing. Let me show you. This cube mold has an aspect ratio of one to one. It's two inches high and two inches wide. I've got a three by six cylinder mold it's twice as high as it is wide. That means it's going to test at a lower strength level. Typically, cubes break 20 to 30 percent higher than a cylinder mold. But neither one of those represent the aspect ratio of the mortar and the wall, which is much higher. It's a 3 eighths of an inch joint, typically. Compressive strengths in the wall are much higher than the strengths we test in a cube or a cylinder mold. I've got a pretty good demonstration, if you could help me out, Will. Sure. I've got some brick I've mortared together with damp sand. Now, damp sand has a compressive strength of zero. If we tested this in cube molds, no strength whatsoever. If you could stand on those brick, well, and try not to hurt yourself, you can see that the damp sand is easily supporting your weight. Why don't you step off? And that sand has got zero compressive strength. Remember the three mortars we showed you earlier? Well, we've cast specimens out of each of them. These cubes were made out of the C270 mortar. These cubes were made out of the C780, or the field mortar. Remember that mortar we scraped off the brick that had been sitting on it for about six minutes? Well, we cast some cubes out of that, too. In addition, we took the field mortar, put it in cube molds, and set it in the refrigerator to cure below 40 degrees. And I'd like you to see how strong that mortar is. It's got almost no strength because of improper curing. We're testing the cubes for one day strength. After testing the three mortars, the results show at one day, the C270 mortar had an average strength of 540 PSI. The C780, or field mortar, had an average strength of 350 PSI. The cubes cast from the material on the brick had an average strength of 560 PSI. We also cast a 3x6 cylinder from the field mortar. Those had an average strength of 210 PSI. So you've just proved to yourself that most of these tests don't really tell you about the mortar in the wall. Well, you don't understand. I have got to test my field mortar. Can't I just pick a number out of the air like 50% or 70% of the C270 strength testing? The short answer is no. When you test the mortar in the field, you are measuring the consistency of batching and mixing by measuring its strength. You can do that, but you must also have a minimum set of standards for the making, curing, protecting, and transporting those specimens. Let's look at ASTM C780 in detail. C780 sets out some minimum requirements for testing mortars in the field. Field test results obtained under C780 are not required to meet the minimum compressive values specified by C270. C780 is a compilation of test methods. It tells you how to run the test and not what those values should be to pass or fail. Some of the test methods included in C780 are consistency by cone penetration, consistency retention or board life, 
mortar aggregate ratio test, mortar water content, mortar air content, compressive strength of molded masonry mortar cylinders, compressive strength of molded masonry mortar cubes, splitting tensile strength of molded masonry mortar cylinders. Following the procedures outlined in ASTM C780 are critical for the proper field testing. Will, look at the size of these specimens. Both the cube mold and the cylinder mold are very small. If we left these outside in the summer sun unprotected, they'd very quickly exceed the 90 degree temperature limit specified by ASTM C780. Although my one day strengths may be improved, my 28 day strengths could be much lower. How much lower, Ray? 30% or more. Will, why don't I show you a couple ways to properly protect specimens in the field? Okay. One of the ways I can protect my specimens is with a curing box. I'll need a high-low thermometer to certify that I didn't exceed the 90 degree or 40 degree temperature limit specified in ASTM C780. Another acceptable way to protect a cube mold according to ASTM C780 is to put it inside a standard 6x12 cylinder mold with some damp paper towels in it. Put the mold in the cylinder, seal the top, and cover it with sand. That'll protect it from temperature extremes and vibration. Mortar air content can be checked with a standard concrete air meter. Consistency can be checked with a modified code penetrometer. Lab testing of the materials in accordance with ASTM C270 is the preferred method, but if you are specifying under the proportion table and the materials meet their individual standards, no testing is necessary. In the field, the inspector should check the proper materials are being used in the proper proportions. Visual inspection is the recommended method, but other tests are available, like the cement aggregate ratio test. Assemblages can be fabricated and tested to evaluate the wall performance as built, but it's critical that the lab have the proper equipment to run the test. Field mortars can be tested, but remember, you are measuring strength only to measure consistency. The strength cannot represent the mortar in the wall, Proper procedures for making, curing, protecting, and transporting the specimens must be followed. For quality assurance purposes, additional tests like mortar and ambient temperature, air content, and mortar batching consistency using the modified VICAT must be run. And there is no point in doing any testing unless you have a qualified laboratory to do the work. Are you back here to test the mortar? Yes, I am. I'm going to check your ingredients to make sure they meet those that are specified by the job, I'll be checking your proportions of your mix to make sure it meets ASTM C270. I'll be making some strength cylinders to check the day-to-day -day consistency of your mortar, and I'll need a safe area where I can set up my curing box to protect my samples. I'll also need to know whether that mix is going to be used for brick or block. And how is this going to be written up? Your mix proportions and ingredients will be written up under ASTM C270. The strength cylinders will be written up under ASTM C780. And how strong do those cylinders have to be to pass? There are no strength requirements for cylinders under ASTM C780. And it'll be a pleasure working with you.